Seven Samurai is a film that came out in 1954 and is written and directed by Akira Kurosawa. So this is actually a film request from a $50 patron that you guys might know by the name of Cynic the Critic in the comment section. And he's been a long time subscriber of mine and I really appreciate him a lot. And his channel is actually filled with reviews and ranked videos. He specifically came out recently with a Stanley Kubrick ranked video that even though I have my disagreements with him and he knows what they are in terms of the ranking, um, it's actually a really well thought out video, really fleshed out. And you could tell that he put a lot of time and effort in what he wanted to say about these films and how he wanted to describe certain things. So I would highly suggest checking that video out specifically, but really check out his whole channel. But anyway, let me just make a quick shameful confession. I have actually never seen an Akira Kurosawa film before. I know that's like Kino blasphemy. I've heard about him for a very long time, at least two or three years now. I just never got around to diving into his work and really exploring him as a filmmaker, which is why I was really excited when Cynic requested for me to watch this film. Because if I'm not mistaken, Seven Samurai is one of his most iconic and most popular works that is pretty much loved by everybody. And some even go as far as saying that this is one of the greatest films ever made. And now that I've finally seen this film, I completely understand why so many people love this film and give it the high praise that they do. I really enjoyed this film and I really admired a lot about it, despite its three hour and a half runtime. Yes, this film is three hours and a half long, which was kind of concerning going into it because... Nobody wants to sit through a three hour and a half film that they don't end up liking very much. But luckily that wasn't the case at all. And honestly, this is one of those films that are so entertaining and character rich that it really could have been five hours long and I could probably sit through it and it wouldn't bother me at all. And it's actually quite astonishing because this film's premise and plot line is actually incredibly simplistic and there's not really much to it. It's essentially just about these village farmers who are under attack by these bandits and they basically just go out and try to recruit a group of samurai that can really help protect them and their crops. So you really wouldn't expect a film that has that simple of a plot to have over a three hour runtime. But where this film exceeds is just how incredibly rich all these characters are. And I really do mean all of the characters because don't get me wrong. I love the samurai characters, and yes, they are the most engaging part of the film, obviously. But even the village farmer characters are actually quite memorable and stand out with their own personalities and all kind of have their own arcs, conflicts, and flaws. And that's something that I've definitely noticed about a lot of Korean and Japanese filmmaking is that they turn out to be quite character heavy. And that's something that is just really fun to look forward to when I go into a film like this. And to me, Seven Samurai is the ultimate masterclass in character writing, where not a single character feels underwritten or underdeveloped. And my personal favorite samurai character in this film, which is probably a lot of people's favorite samurai character in this film, was uh, Kikichiro, I think is how you pronounce it. He basically is like the unofficial drunken samurai in this film. And I thought his character was just like super entertaining and it was really interesting to see how his character unfolded throughout the film. But one neat thing that I personally noticed while I was watching this film was that there is no way that Quentin Tarantino isn't deeply inspired by Akira Kurosawa films or at least old classic Japanese films in general because um, not only is the strong emphasis on character really apparent but even down to like the music choices and how they're used throughout the film just had this classic heroic sound to it that reminded me a lot of the same way that Quentin Tarantino would use in his films and there's also this comedic element to the film as well which I found quite surprising because I really didn't expect to laugh at this film as much as I did and it just has this silly admirable charm about it that isn't like too outrageous to the point where it'll take you out of the drama when it happens. Because this film balances comedy and drama incredibly well. The film has this constant incorporation and blending of both genres throughout the film. 
that never really took you out of the overall mood and never made it to where like you couldn't take the dramatic aspects seriously. And the film didn't make you feel uncomfortable to where you couldn't laugh at the silly comedic stuff because it's not, it didn't feel like it was choppy or jarring. It just had this really smooth blend throughout the film, which again is something that strongly insisted that Tarantino was deeply inspired by this film and other stuff like this. But what this film builds up to in the third act is quite astonishing considering how ambitious it is with the scope of these giant action sequences. Because essentially the third act of this film is just non-stop action. But it's action that contains actual heart and substance to it that made me feel a whole lot more invested in it because you felt this genuine stakes for the characters when they were going through moments of peril. But even on top of that, there is just a lot going on with the amount of stunt work and coordination going on with these action sequences, because there are tons of people on horseback, and there's just horses falling over and people falling over, and I'm, I'm pretty sure horses got injured during this, which is kind of sad. But just what it took to achieve what was occurring on screen with that kind of magnitude is quite astonishing. Especially for something in the 1950s. Because to be honest, none of the stunt work in this film and none of the action in here feels dated or cheesy. And you would think that for something that was made in the early 1950s, that there would be some element of datedness or cheesiness to it, but it's not like, it's all very believable, it's all incredibly convincing, and for Seven Samurai to be able to achieve something like that over 70 years ago is really impressive, and it's something about the film that I truly admire. And one thing that I just thought was really cool and funny about the making of this film, which is something that I have to give Cynic credit for because he's the one that informed me about it, uh, is that apparently um, Akira Kurosawa went over budget multiple times during the making of this film. And then when the producers were were hounding him about it and basically telling them that like we're not going to invest money into you anymore, he would just be like, okay. And then he would just dip and then he would go fishing. And which already is just like my kind of guy because I love fishing. But, like, eventually, the, the producers would be like, okay, fine, just, just here, just, just take the money, goddammit. And that apparently happened multiple times throughout production, and I just think that's a really badass and hilarious fact. I, I thought was slightly bothersome when I was watching it. And it's just a fact that some of the writing throughout this film came off just incredibly on the nose, like, in terms of the dialogue. Like, there would be a handful of moments in this film where something would already be pretty clear to the audience, whether it was shown visually or it was something that was demonstrated to through more clever writing. And then there would be like another type of character that would ask an obvious question just to reassure that what was happening was really happening. And there were moments like that throughout this film that I was like, damn, like, why, why do filmmakers feel like the audience just won't get something and maybe they're right but some of this stuff was just really really obvious and it just seemed like why would you take away from how beautifully you were able to craft that and convey that information by just forcibly inserting dialogue that just double reassured to the audience what was happening and i just didn't like that aspect of the film but it's a really really minor aspect and most of the dialogue in the writing is really well done it's just there were just little moments sprinkled throughout the film that would kind of have that element to it. I'm actually going to go ahead and give a quick example of what I'm talking about because I just think for a film like this, it's important for me to actually demonstrate what I mean. So if you haven't seen the film yet, I suggest covering your ears for the next 30 seconds to a minute. I'll make sure to put a spoiler tab up top so you know when it's over. But um, this is what I'm talking about. So when you have this great scene where uh, Kikichido gives his rant, this really angry, soulful rant, um, where he's kind of chewing out all the samurai and how they're judging and viewing these farmers, it was just an excellent scene. Like, everything about it really came together. And again, what's so great about it is that it was able to tell you a lot about his character in the sense that he came from a farming village himself and he was raised a farmer. And, you know, you didn't need any character to reassure that in order for someone to understand it. 
But yet, after we get that excellent scene where he just goes on this rant, you have the other main samurai of the film basically ask this really obvious question where he's like, And it was just little moments like that that happened throughout the film that would be bothersome to me because it's it's kind of heartbreaking sometimes to see something be so excellently portrayed and then um, kind of diluted a little bit by having something like that in it. But again, it's it's a really minor criticism. It's not something that really dragged the film down for me at all, but it was something that was noticeable when I was watching it. Because overall, I still think that this is a fucking magnificent film, especially for something that was created in the, in the early 1950s. And this is something that I actually love. Like, I actually love this film, regardless of that flaw. And this is something that I really, really want to buy on Criterion. I heard this is, like, the second Criterion ever made, which is really interesting. I'm going to buy the hell out of that in the next November sale. So I'm going to give Seven Samurai a 9 out of 10. One thing that I forgot to mention about this film is that the camera work and the lighting in this film is just immaculate. Like, there are some shots in this film that I was just in awe by. Because I was like, that is a beautiful shot. How the hell were you able to frame that so perfectly? Especially, Like, it just seems like something that is so incredibly ahead of its time. And um, for those of you who follow the channel, you know that I love me some brilliant aesthetic work. And this film has some brilliant aesthetic work. So that was something that I really admired about the film as well. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed what I had to say about Seven Samurai. If you really enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.